Hey hey people, in this video we're gonna continue working on the dialogue system that we created in the previous episode. We're gonna add some simple character movements, interaction with NPCs, the ability to speed up the dialogue in case you don't want to wait or close the dialogue entirely, the feature to restart the dialogue every time you open it, and an end line as an optional feature in case you don't want your player to read the same stuff after he already finished the dialogue. So let's get started. Open the project from the previous episode. If you don't have it, I'll put the link in the description where you can get it. First off, let's create a structure and put things where they belong. Create three new game objects, core, level and player, and reset their position to zero. Now select the sound manager, the main camera and the event system and place them under core. You can also rename the canvas to UI if that makes more sense to you. Next up, open the UI, select the background and delete it, we don't need it anymore. Then select the main camera and change the background color to whatever you like. And we're done cleaning up. Let's move to the first real task, which is character movement. Select the player game object, add a rigid body 2D, a sprite renderer and a box collider 2D to it. Make sure to pick the 2D variant of a rigid body and box collider. Now, let's create a character movement script and attach it to the player game object. Once it's done, open it and delete all the code that we don't need. To get started, we need two variables, the speed of a player and its physical body. The body we can get by using the getComponent method and the speed will be serializable, so we can change it from the editor. Now that we have this in place, we need to detect input and move the body accordingly. The easiest way to do it is to check the input.getAccess property in the update method. Here you can see that I made two variables that will return the input multiplied by the speed and multiplied by time.delta time to make it frame rate independent. Now we just need to take the velocity of our body and make it equal to a vector2 which has these two variables as parameters. Now we can test how it works. Go back into Unity and assign a sprite to your player. Once that's done, adjust the size of a player to your liking. Next, you need to deactivate the gravity of a player. This is important because if you don't, the player is just gonna fall off screen. Also, assign the speed of a character. I found that 1000 works well enough for me. Finally, we can deactivate the dialog holder and test the actual movement of a character. As you can see, it's very simplistic, but it works for the purposes of this video. I have one small problem here though, and it's the fact that you can move diagonally. To solve this, I'm going to check which keys are pressed. If W or S is pressed, I'm going to apply only the vertical input. Alternatively, if A or D is pressed, I'm going to apply only the horizontal input. One last thing I want to do here is to stop the body completely once there is no input. Otherwise it will slide like it's on ice. And finally the movement is done, you can go back into Unity and play around with it. Now let's move on to the NPC interactions. First thing I want to do is adjust the box collider on our character, so we have a basic collision system working and we can detect when we are close to the NPC. For me this result is good enough, if you want to make it pixel perfect feel free to play around with it. When you are ready, let's create a new game object which will be our actual NPC. It will have a couple components, first of all a sprite renderer. Now you can attach whatever image you want to it. I will use an image of Sans, link in the description. You can also make it a bit smaller and put it in a different place than our character. Alright, next step is to change the tag of the object to NPC. To do this, you need to add a new tag. Now you can assign the tag to the object, make sure you don't forget this. Now we can add two box colliders 2D. The first one will be for collisions and the second one will be a trigger that will tell the player that we can activate the dialogue. Make the second collider bigger and mark it as a trigger. Next up we will make a script called NPC controller which will be responsible for activating the dialogue and telling the other scripts if the dialogue is currently active or not. Make sure to attach it to the NPC game object and let's do some coding. Clean up the script and let's create a private game object called Dialog. This will allow us to attach a certain line of dialog to a certain NPC. As usually we'll make it serializable so we can reference it in the editor. The first method that we will make will be called activate dialog. 
and as you can guess it will just take the dialog game object and will set it to active. Next up I'll make a public boolean called dialog active and it will return if the dialog is currently active or not. Now we can return to Unity and drag the dialog holder game object into the NPC script. Next step is to make it work from the character movement script. To achieve this I'm gonna use the onTriggerState2D method. I'm gonna check if the collision game object has the tag NPC. Then I'm gonna check if we press any key. In my case it will be E. If yes, then I will take the NPC controller component and use the activate method inside it. Let's see if it works. I'm gonna walk into the edge of my NPC and press E. As you can see, it does. Now what you can easily do is go back to the script and change the key that you activate the dialog. You can set it to whatever you like. But we have two issues here. First of all, you can move while you're talking. And secondly, if you want to restart the dialogue, it will not play again. It will just repeat the last line and it might actually get stuck, like it happened to me here. So let's tackle this step by step. First of all, let's lock in the player movements while you are talking with the NPC. To do this, we need to go to the character movement script, create a new variable of type NPC controller and let's call it just NPC. So every time we get close to an NPC, we're gonna assign a value to this variable. And vice versa, when we exit the trigger of an NPC, we're gonna make this variable null. In this way, we can actually keep track of the NPC we are talking to and reference it in the code to know if his dialogue is active or not. And to achieve this exact purpose, we're gonna make a private boolean method called inDialog. So here we have two distinct scenarios, when our NPC variable is null and when it's not. When it's not null, we can make a direct reference to the dialog active boolean inside the NPC controller script that tells us when the dialog is active. You can see it right here in case you don't remember what it does. Let's continue. The second scenario is when the NPC is actually null. In this case, we can't possibly be in a dialog. That's why we return false. Now we can use this boolean inside the update to only move when we are outside the dialog. And we will accomplish this by simply putting everything inside an if statement. If you also want a couple bonus points for writing proper code, you can replace this part with the NPC variable. This way we minimize the number of references. If you go back into Unity now, you will see that you could not actually move when you are inside the dialog now. So we finished NPC interactions. Next up is the feature to speed up the lines or close the dialogue entirely. I find this important for two reasons. First of all, not all of your players will want to read the entire dialogue. And secondly, some players might open the dialogue by accident and be forced to read it all over again. That's why we need the close dialogue feature. So let's get this stuff to work. Exit play mode and open the dialogue line script. So the idea here is fairly simple. We will have an update method that will check for input. In my case it will be a mouse click. When that input is detected, we basically will take the entire text and show it without any delay. We also need to check for the case when the text has already appeared. In this situation we will just skip to the next line by saying finished equals true. Now you're gonna see this error, and this is because you cannot actually change the finished variable from outside the dialog base class. To fix it, open the dialog base class script and change the level of the setter from private to protected. As you can see, this fixes it, but we still have a small problem to solve before finishing this feature, and that's the fact that we don't stop the write text coroutine when skipping lines. To solve this, let's declare a new variable of type iEnumerator and let's call it lineAppear. Next we go to the start method and make lineAppear be equal to the write text coroutine that we declared earlier. And now we just say start coroutine lineAppear in order to initialize the dialog like normally. Now here's the most important part of this step, we have to make sure to stop the coroutine every time we skip a line. 
We do this by simply saying stop coroutine and passing in the line appear variable that we created a bit earlier. Also make sure to change the order of these two lines. And finally we can see how it works. To test it, go back into Unity, select the first dialog line and increase the delay from 0.1 to 2 seconds or even more. Now when you walk up to Sans you're gonna see that he's talking very very slowly, but if you press click you're gonna skip the entire line. Alright, that's working as intended, but we still don't have the ability to close the dialog entirely, so this will be our next step. Go back into Unity and open the dialog holder script. Here we will need an update method that will check for a specific input. In my case it will be the escape key. When this key is pressed we will deactivate all the lines and we will also deactivate the holder object. And just because I want to be safe and thorough, let's store the dialog sequence I enumerator inside a variable and stop that coroutine every time we deactivate the dialog. Okay, it should work now. Let's walk up to the NPC, open the dialog and then press escape, see what happens. As intended, the dialog closes immediately, even when you open it on the second and third try. But now we see that we have another problem. When you open the dialog repeatedly, it doesn't restart the lines, so it's just an empty text box. Which brings us to our fourth step of a video. To fix this issue, we're gonna have to take a couple of steps. First of all, open the dialog holder script. In our case, the problem here lies with the awake method, and that's because awake is called only once. What we actually want to put here is on enable, and that's because on enable is called every time this dialog holder is gonna be activated. This was the first step. Now we're gonna change the dialog line script as well. So what we wanna do here is replace the start method with on enable. And the second part is to create a new method called reset line, which is going to reset the text holder and it's going to say that the finished bool is false. Making a new method wasn't really necessary here, but it looks cleaner and now we can reuse this logic in multiple places. When you're done, make sure to call reset line inside on enable. And now you should have fully functional dialog that replays every time you open it. Press play and see for yourself. You're gonna see that the dialog will restart. And it doesn't matter if you finished it or closed it with the escape key. And that's the end of step 4. Now you have a fully functional dialog system that you can reuse with multiple NPCs. If this was the result you were hoping for, you can safely end the video here, but there's one bonus feature that I thought would be cool to implement. You know how in some games the NPCs get annoyed when you try to talk to them too many times? Bloody hell, what is it now? You ask too many questions. Well, let's implement this into our system. First of all, exit play mode, select dialog line 3 and duplicate it. Now select the dialog line script and change the text input to be something snarky and maybe arrogant. Now open the dialog holder script because we have a bit of coding to do. First of all, I'm gonna add a new private boolean called dialog finished. And I'm gonna use it to check if the player finished talking with the NPC or not. Now, inside the dialog sequence I enumerator, I'm going to do a simple if else check. If the dialog has not been finished, you're gonna get the normal dialog sequence. And that means that we will activate every single line of dialog except the last one. That's why we need to put a minus one after the child count. If it has been finished, you're gonna get the last snarky remark that tells you to go away or something. And we will achieve this logic by simply copying it from inside the for loop, but this time we actually activate only the last line, not all of them. To get the number of the last line you can use the transform child count minus 1. I'm gonna store this inside an index variable. Now, right at the end of the dialog sequence, just before we deactivate the game object, we're gonna say dialog finished equals true. Now, let's see it in action. That's it, we successfully implemented all the steps in this tutorial and I think we made good progress in this video. Thanks a lot for watching this, it really means a lot to me and the support I've been getting on the channel is pretty mind-blowing for me. 
these numbers just don't seem real and the comment section is just very positive. I think the last video has gotten no dislikes and that's amazing. Thank you guys for everything, I'll try to do this more consistently in the future. It would really help me if you press that subscribe button and turn on the notifications and also consider supporting me on Patreon. I really hope to make this a full time job someday but right now it's just not feasible. But that's it for today, thanks again for watching, stay safe and keep making games.